Welcome back everyone to the first semi-final of the International Wildcard Invitational. Hard Random just took the first game versus INTZ. We'll see if they can continue that hit moving into the second one. My name is Julian Pastry Time Card. Joining me once again on the analyst desk today is Tim Carvin, Wendell and Lucio. Soul Strikes Park. Three thumbs up. That's a pretty good start to the, uh, to the desk there. Let's have a chat though about what happened in that last game. You guys are great. Uh, <laughs> and have a look at uh, kind of what happened in the last game before we move into maybe what we think should happen here moving into our second uh, Carbon. I know you like to talk about it all the time. It seems to be very important in this matchup. What happened in this jungle matchup? Because it seems like Stehos just had a big run. Yeah, well, um, just before we get stuck into uh, the jungle matchup, I do want to mention one thing about uh, Stehos. Yep. That is that uh, every game, <laughs> for some reason, I mean, he is the best performing jungler at this tournament, no doubt. But for some reason, every game he starts three red pots. And I have no idea why. <laughs> when I see someone start three red pots, the first thing I think is, you are a super noob. Why can't you clear the jungle? Why do you need extra health? Refillable is so much more cost effective. You can sell it. It lasts all game. Um, but, uh, I mean, he's doing well, so you can't blame him yeah. too much. But, God, it is frustrating to watch. Uh, Graves doesn't even take damage. All he plays is Graves. Graves takes zero damage for the jungle. Why do you need three rare pots? Uh, is this the right time to also mention the Black Cleaver? The Black Cleaver? Uh, okay, okay, so in that game, I thought Black Cleaver was all right. He also, I mean, at least he rushed more this yep. time. Throughout the tournament, I mean, he slowly, his build is getting better and better. At the start, he was doing Black he was like doing black Cleaver straight away and stuff. It was just awful. But I think he's found the Mobifier guide that says go more first. And... Start with three red pots for some reason. He's still got Black Cleaver in the optional items. He's still, yeah, yeah, he's still bleeding Black Cleaver. But in that game, it was okay because he was versed the double tanks. So I don't mind that so much. <laughs> but uh, look, drop the three red pots, mate. Go to the refillable, please. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's giving me a headache. Well, um, other than that, I've been looking good here, and I saw you were very impressed with the actual objective control throughout that game because Stehos was all over that early game. It felt like he was managed to get a lead, and then almost every buff belonged to him. Yeah, sure. Uh, so they initiated the. Uh, they got the lane swap mm -hmm. off, and both teams got the trade off uh, for Rift Herald for Dra uh, Dragon. But after the six minute, uh, Stayoffs managed to get the both Rift Herald and the Dragon. So that was an uh, objective lead for Hard Random already into uh, like 16 minutes into the game. And I just felt like he continued from there. He was up in the jungle matchup early on. Graves was just doing work time and time again. I mean, I think he was up at, what, four minutes at some point, Carver? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I was keeping track. And, uh, I mean, they did they did swap. But four minutes in, he was already down five or six CS, which doesn't seem like much. But five or six CS actually means five or six jungle minions, which are worth significantly more than normal CS. So it is quite a lead. I mean, he kept stretching it out, stretching it out. I think he was maybe even 15 to 20 up at around 15 minutes. I mean, Re Revolta did end up catching up after that big team fight that Ince won, and uh, he brought it back, brought the lead back. But, uh, I mean, Stahos just played unbelievable. They absolutely have to get rid of this Graves. I mean, one big thing I want to point out was the dragon fight. Yep. Um, and that is that uh, Stahos started the dragon, and then Ince come in to contest it. And what happens is that Stahos dashes back into the pit. They're both doing drag. Revolta wins the smite war. And um, one thing I want to point out is I don't think Revolta played necessarily bad. Just Stahos played that little bit better because Revolta wins the smite war. Uh, Kindred ult goes down. They're 1v1ing each other in the pit. Kindred ult runs out. Graves blows his head off, and then immediately afterwards, immediately after winning this 1v1, he dashes across, cues the wall, and wins the team fight for Hard Random. And I think that that was a really nice moment because it sums up so perfectly what this game is, and that is that it's uh, the 1v1 jungle matchup, and we literally saw a 1v1 <laughs> in the dragon pit that decided the game. Yeah, it was kind of awkward that if Stagos did manage to win the smite fight, then uh, Revolta would have had the Red Smite and that would have completely changed the uh, <laughs> That's dynamic a good point, actually, of the, yeah. uh, the game. So, yeah, so getting the Dragon but losing the team fight. Well, it was a little awkward here, so you are going to move a little bit into the next game and see what these teams should be changing. Of course, we'll swap sides for this one. INTZ will be on the blue side versus Hard Random on the red. Does that change the draft? Because that seems to be the big stickler for you two today. Mm. I feel like one team drafted very well or very straightforward for them and one other team maybe not so well. How did you guys feel about the draft in last game and what do you think we should change Soul Strikes so, moving into game two? So Hard Random, since they won, uh, they don't really need to change anything. But on the under other hand, Inter needs to completely change the draft. They need to stop giving uh, Hard Random their comfort picks. I think I'm expecting Ints to uh, adapt well in this series. I think they're a quite good best of five team. Uh, and I, I expect their draft to change a lot. Look, they have to get rid of some of these comfort picks. Like he said, it's just too much. Uh, I think the other very interesting thing is now that Hard Random is on red side, but they've beaten Echo for the first time in this tournament, will they ban Echo on red or will they allow them to first pick it? Because um, clearly they, they, they can deal with it. 
Would that? Have, oh, yep. Yeah, I just want to see. I just want to see the echo top, not the bottom. Just leave uh, the Maokai and both Trundle up. Uh, it, echo counters counters them both. So, yeah, just put the echo top. It was a bit of a weird pick there in the draft, and certainly didn't work out there for INTZ in the game number one. Still plenty to look for though, as they're going to move into the champs like relatively shortly. But a few things to mention here, perhaps. Carbon, what are your thoughts moving into the next game? Um, so one thing I do want to mention was the uh, Jinx from Macau, mm -hmm. um, and it was criticised a little bit. Jinx is a little bit off meta, although he has played a lot. Um, one thing I do want to mention is that throughout this tournament, uh, Macau has done 32% of his team's damage on Jinx, and that is a significant amount. And again, here we saw. Uh, um, we haven't seen the damage graph, but I assume that it is something along those lines. Because again here, we saw a great Jinx game from him. He, saw he, he got some fantastic resets, some great rockets. Uh, unfortunately, it wasn't enough, and that's mostly due to the jungle mid lane uh, uh, performance. Uh, however, I think that uh, Mikau did play quite well, and I wouldn't be surprised to see him pick up a Jinx again. Do we maybe pull, play more aggressively around this AD carry then? Because Macau, he's playing the likes of Ezreal, playing these Jinx, these big high damage champions that can really carry a fight. Do Antizzy look to their actual AD carry as a carry here? Because Miracle on the opposite side had a fine game on the Lucian. Uh, again, another comfort champion for him, but I'm not sure they need to give all this pressure to Macau, which is kind of not what a lot of other teams are doing. Maybe. I mean, we did see them. That is actually what they did, though. Yeah, you of know, course. They played, they played the, the tank mid, then they, they uh, went down to only two threats to try and enable Macau as much as possible. But, uh, look, they just fell too far behind, right? Yeah, and if you're behind as Jinx player, you really don't want that. And you did. Uh, Macau did actually rush the IE, but one item, uh, IE, just not good item. Uh, just not a good rush Really item. needs that hurricane for the yeah. spike. I feel like maybe should have changed his build there, perhaps. Definitely some things for ITZ to look at here, because again, overall, their play seemed to be quite solid. Uh, we talked about top lane. Again, it was just such a weird way to pick. Do we feel like uh, Yang should be more aggressive? Because I know, Sol, you were very impressed with his laning early on in the tournament. This guy seems like he can beat up 1v1 almost anyone, but I feel like you should probably pick him a matchup where he can actually win lane versus a matchup where he just kind of has to sit back and take it. Yeah, so Yang just picked the losing matchup. Uh, Trundle against Maokai. Uh, Trundle does very well against uh, Maokai, but Yang played it really well. Uh, sometimes uh, you see Trundle solo queuing Maokai uh, randomly, but Yang managed to hold himself, get this QSS a second item. So Yang did his job. He, he, he did it fine, but it's just the rest of his teammate uh, just needs to step up a bit. I mean, I think one thing to mention is uh, is the Trundle, right? And that is, uh, it's one of Smurf's, what's well, Smurf's, Smurf's second most played champion in this, uh, in this tournament. Um, uh, the QSS is quite good into Trundle, you know, once the top laner or once all the tanks have QSS, Trundle kind of just turns into a pillar bot, which is what he is for the su from the support role. Um, but at the same time, I would like to see a Trundle ban, I think. I mean, he took an inhibitor by himself, which was pretty fun. But <laughs> I mean, he, he did, did kind of have to go full tank. Yeah, I mean, he did, but at the same time, like... Okay, so Trundle was counterable with the QSS, yes. right? You can pick anything into Trundle, you build a QSS, and you'll be A-OK. -okay. However, when a guy is playing the same champ every time, mm. even from Ince, because I, I, I imagine what Ince's coach is saying is like, no, guys, Trundle is fine. You build QSS, he's just a pillar bot, like we can deal with him. But at the same time, like, if he's always playing the same champion and he's always getting results, just get rid of it, even if logically you don't think you have to. Yeah, and they still got time. Uh, they still got uh, two more games left. Uh, hopefully... Four, but yeah, hopefully more. <laughs> yeah, uh, so they just need to see and adapt throughout the series. And that's the thing. Best of five is something we haven't seen yet in the tournament, of course, because the round robin was best of ones. Do we expect INTZ to be a team that can adapt well? I feel like this game, if nothing else, and particularly this draft here, that was good timing, <laughs> is going to tell us a lot. Let's get in the chance. Like, though, INTZ, of course, have swapped over to the blue side. Hard random hanging out over on the red. And see you later once again. Bardo and Rise both banned away. And Italy Alistair also taken. So these four bands currently are identical from these two sides. Yeah, I mean, we. I was going to comment on the Rise ban again. I mean, we did see some good Rise games from Kira yesterday, but at the same time, uh, I, I don't think it's that required. I think, okay, so they have banned the Graves this time, which, mm -hmm. is, which is very important. Well, they finally make the adaptation. Graves taken away, which does leave a one ban here for Hard Random. We'll see what they want to take. And again, with INTZ on the blue side, it feels like, is Echo the obvious ban away, or do they leave an opening? So we'll have to find out soon, but curious to see what happens there. So if they ban the Echo right here, they're essentially giving uh, Kindred for free. To, and so they probably should leave both Echo and Kindred up and take one or, and the other. Uh, I think you just, I think you just, uh, you just ban Echo. 
Okay, nope. well, they've left them both up, but I, I, I think you should still just ban Echo. I mean, hard random. I, I'm, I know the conversation they're having, and that's, you know, oh, well, we won last game against Echo. We don't need to ban it again. But I think if, if Ince takes it and puts it in the top lane, they'll have real big issues. But Kindred is actually the first pick for INTZ. So Sol mentioned it. This seems like the most obvious picks that are left open. They don't want to bang one and not get the other one. I'm not sure if this is the right draft, perhaps, but they have to take Echo here, right? Yeah. But then again, uh, Yang did manage to uh, beat a Echo in the lane, so just got to see how Yang performs against an Echo. Maybe we could see an Echo mid again, but... <laughs> mm. I don't think we're going to see it from Kira. No. <laughs> um, curious to see what jungle they take now with, with the top three junglers being taken away. Um, I hope it's something along the lines of maybe an Elise. I think Elise could be really strong. Um, we see uh, the Echo hover out with Lucian. Yeah. Again, Lucian, this will be the seventh time he's played Lucian. <laughs> yeah. uh, Smurf has also played Echo before, so it looks to me like Hard Rain are going to get all their comfort picks again. If they do take these two Which picks, uh, I'd really like to see in taking away and put Greg as top. Then I really want to see what Steos is going to play. Uh, that means all his junglers uh, banned off. Yeah, he hasn't played all this tournament yet, right? That, that is a good point, actually. I would love uh, taking the Gregus away would be, would be really intelligent by Ince. Um, because, yeah, there's, there's not much on the table in terms of jungle for uh, the Stahos. And, and like we said, he seems to be carrying them in almost every game. And this was sort of the strategy that we saw from INTZ before. Take all the strong junglers yes. away, whether you ban them or pick them. In this case, it's kind of a combination of both. Hard Random kind of cornering themselves with an the Italy ban. And there it is, the Gragas and the Tom Kent picked away. Uh, very interesting Tom Kent. Maybe uh, you play Tom Kent? I can play Tom Kent. <laughs> <laughs> Anything you can do, I can do better. Uh, it's curious that, it, that, it, that it's going up so high in, uh, in, uh, in priority because um, it's not really that strong, right? Like, uh, you haven't seen much Braum since the start of the tournament, but I still think Braum is very strong. Poppy support is up as well. We've seen Dumble Doge have great success with the Poppy support, and EGM also had great support with the uh, great uh, results with the Poppy support, rather. Um, so curious that the, that the time is, is so high prioritized by both these teams now. It's funny, I think almost Liquid just wanted to play it because his team need, maybe needed it or he's a good Tom player. I almost feel like Jox is just like, I hate that Tom Kent. I don't want to have to play against it again. <laughs> We're not banning it. I guess I take it See away. See how much you like it. <laughs> maybe they're trying to pick the Jinx. Like like yep. we saw the Worlds last year, maybe they're going for the Jinx Tom, uh, the eat and reset uh, the combo. Definitely very strong there. Thresh also available if they wanted to build that lane, but they have Tom. So pretty similar stuff. Trundle, Elise though, are the picks away. So Sehos will take Elise into battle. It seems, the, seems to be a pretty logical counter pick into Kindred, especially with so many junglers banned away. I mean, the big question here is where is this Trundle going? Mm. Are we going to, are we actually going to see an Echo mid from, from Kira or is this Trundle support? I mean, for me, I would much prefer to see Trundle support. I think Trundle's not bad into Tom. Uh, and I think Echo mid is is not very good, particularly for hard random who have never run a two threat comp in this tournament so far. Well, different picks here from INTZ. He's trying to round out this team comp. It's not the Jinx just yet here, but Callista could be something decent here as well. I know I think Sol actually would have preferred Callista in the last game. Curious to see what you think about Jinx versus Callista right now, given that that might be the choice they're going through. So right now, if they pick the Jinx, uh, the only form of uh, Dive. Skill shots, uh, CC that Hard Random has right now is Elise. And if Elise does manage to get the cocoon off, you can just eat the Jinx and reset the whole fight. Whereas Kindred, uh, I mean, uh, Callista, uh, she's a lot more mobile, so she could easily dodge the Elise cocoon, but was it necessarily a good idea to pick the Calm Catch? Well, I well, guess we'll have to see, but is Callista LeBlanc did all the picks there? And Nivea's going to round things out. Gentlemen, final thoughts on the draft before we get in the game. Uh, very excited to see this Anivia game from Kira. Uh, they dropped it from the bands. They banned it in the first game, and they dropped it, and, and this time they pick it up. And uh, I think this game will have a lot to do with how the, the, the following drafts pan out. So, uh, Tokers, uh, he just needs to step up. He's playing the LeBlanc, so I expect him to make some crazy magic we'll, play. Well, we'll see if he can do it, but we are going to get back into the casting death at Seaf and Rusty up for game number two. We are geared up for game two indeed. Welcome back to the caster desk. A much different pick ban this time around, but some interesting priorities on both sides. Yeah, I think that Tom Kench is always going to be the standout <laughs> pick. I'm not, a, I'm not sold on the strategy of just taking away Tom Kench from Likrit, but based on his prior history with it, I'm assuming that that is why not to pick it for themselves. It's a really interesting denial pick when you're trying to take something away that isn't really strong mm -hmm. in the meta, but is strong on a personal level, right? Yeah. Like 
Bard is strong without a doubt as a champion. Strong for Liquid 2. That always made sense to me as a band. This Tom Kench, not quite so much, but INTZ, of course, veterans of best of five series. They did very yeah. well on their road to get here, and we have to assume that they have a strategy coming in with this, yeah. and we'll just have to see if they can execute. They're the best of five team, I, I was going to say, out of every team of this tournament. Realistically, the team with the most coaches, with the psychologists, with everything there, they've got the mentality and the ability to carry themselves through a best of five, probably the best out of every single region competing right now and I would imagine that this was a decision made in advance with the absolute confidence from the support player this time around in Jockster that he can play the Tom Kench and do it to a great degree of success. It was meta not too long ago. It doesn't mean it's meta now, but it does mean that he can play it. Well, you know, he will be prepared for that pick. Of course, very veteran support, as you said, but utilizing it appropriately in these team fights is going to be a big question because we've seen these games be pretty explosive. The last one, very calm for the first small period of the game, but hits that threshold where fights start to happen and the teams just start tearing each other apart. We'll have to see if they replicate it as we head into game two between INTZ and Hard Random. Once again, both teams looking for a relatively safe start. Yeah, everyone's just going to fan out once again. This has been the tournament standard, I will say. Just chilling in five. It's the five finger, I guess, point. five point start. Five, five fingers, point. nice. Five finger start. I was going to say having a discount for yeah. some reason. Just yeah. came to mind. It's, like, it's a steal. No, yeah. It. <laughs> well played. <laughs> Yang, kissing it, spotting out a little bit of vision there. Five fingers, returning to the hand, <laughs> as it would appear. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Course moving forward. Kira ready for this mid lane oh matchup. Is that the bird's dance? I think that might be the. Oh, he does the, the wave. Chicken dance. He does the wave. Is that the, is the that legendary skin? Do they give him a new dance? Is that a oh my god, that has to be like a region appropriate uh, dance or something, right? I own that skin. I feel like the most Mexican boosted caster of all time. I should know Mexican that that's wave? the dance. Oh. Wait, which skin is it? I think it's the uh, black frost Anivia. The, like, oh my god, that is okay. That's glorious. Legendary for a reason, I suppose. Moving in, of course, going to set their sights on those early Krugs, hoping to gain an experience advantage. Kira hitting home with that first stun. Not going to have too much follow-up quite yet. Anivia versus LeBlanc is a really odd matchup overall. I'm not sure what to expect out of this one. Is LeBlanc just going to play as aggressive as ever here? LeBlanc in this matchup kind of needs to play aggressive to make any kind of favorable trade. The thing with that is Anivia's the most well-equipped champion to deal with that once you hit the level 6 mark. Up until that level 6, it comes down to dodging the Flash Frost and making plays, and yeah, absolutely, it needs to be aggressive from Tok as the Ignite says it all. But I still worry for him past the level 5 mark once he ticks over to 6. And of course, drop the storm. starting to get aggressive here. Not going to find three stacks of that acquired taste. Not going to get the Ooh. devour. Making it onto Liquid though. Picking him up. Taking a tower shot in the process. Throwing him back out, but a lot of damage is traded back. Jockster does not have thick skin yet. May have to make it out to safety. Is he going to get taken down? Heal gets burned. No one going to drop here in the bottom lane. And no summoners burnt, surprisingly. The ignite not used. The exhaust as well from Liquid. Very confusing stuff. Jockster still doesn't have thick skin. This is not where he wants to be. First blood going over to the Elise. Nowhere to go. Just balancing that jungle matchup. The flash backwards into the team, though. They're ready for a fight. They're pushing this one further. Revolta overstaying is welcome. That's two. The tills keep dropping. Macau may make it to safety, but he takes so much damage. Blue buff moving down as oh. well. Miracle grabbing another one. LeBlanc, the ignite is ticking. She'll grab the buff as well. How many players are going to pick up the double buffs? before they'll finally settle, and it looks like they'll settle on Talkers. Yeah, and they settle on the LeBlanc, and that is not a great position for Kira to be in, but it's a fantastic position for the bottom lane of Hard Random as they pick up two kills onto the Lucian. And Liquor just spent that whole time just smashing people. Absolutely dominating from this Trundle support. This is the power of a pick we haven't seen quite as much in the bottom lane this tournament. However, We'll have to see what Talkers can do with these double buffs. This team at a small disadvantage, and oh, that is some damage. Nobody likes hitting, getting hit by that one-two from Anivia. Talkers especially hurting after that one. Got to say, though, last game, we saw a Miracle pick up the Cole immediately. This game, he gets two kills, two long swords. This man is ready to fight. Yeah, he's looking very confident, this Le Lucian, rather, in the bottom lane. Having a Trundle to back him up as well. It's the kind of 2v2 that can snowball unbelievably hard. As they still need to show some form of respect to a Callista. You have to remember, I believe this is the changed Callista also that is not as strong when support's not there. Yeah. 
Much less opportunity to 1v1. Pushing forward here on the top lane, though. Trading remains relatively even, as does CS across the lanes. Last game, we saw Steos pull out a huge advantage over Revolta in the early stages of the game. This time on the Elise, not quite as quick as the Graves. Pushing forward. Everything in this game, I mean, going to be relatively calm once again. But standard lanes, I feel like, spice up the game, make it a little more interesting. Give the junglers especially a little bit more power to make plays, and we've already talked about it time and time again. This is the matchup that we have to watch. Yeah, you have to look towards these junglers. It's the big deal, no doubt. First game, Steos stepped up. He was a big factor. And this time around, he's on the Elise, and we yet to actually see him play this champion. Revolta yeah. on one of the comfortable ones in Kindred. And even if he's a good Elise, it's just not going to have the same impact that a Graves does in those team fights. Good cocoons, great pick potential, great dueling but just not the raw damage to match the Graves. Revolta, of course, once again on the Kindred, securing his first stack on that passive. <laughs> Tom Kench, finally with all of his abilities, taking it to safety. Oh. Talkers. Oh. That was hardest read I've ever seen. Yeah, that was a hard read, and I believe the uh, E actually was hidden beneath the Q's animation, because that did like 300 damage in one hit. No, Talkers has to be careful here. This is... When you're LeBlanc, you just expect to dominate lanes like this with yeah. all this mobility. But Kira, clearly unfazed, completely outmaneuvering his opponent. I mean, I'm just completely stunned by this. LeBlanc, though, make it a brief reprieve from that Null Magic Mantle. Picks that one up along with the Blasting one. We'll have to see what Kira opts for. Potentially that Rod of Ages? You would imagine the Rod of Ages, yeah. Uh, the Athenes is also the defensive route you could go. You can't afford to go tier anymore. It's just the way that it is now as a Nivea. Life Steos heading up to the top lane. Maybe looking to dive out this Gragas is still level 5. Convergence comes down. Not a whole lot of options for him That's to body manly. slam out. Moving in. Finally gets level 6. Instant level up. Instant cast backwards. Yang snapping in, but Smurf. With the snapback on the ultimate, make sure to stick here that kill. And the reason that you can pick an Elise and dive a tank top lane with an Echo is because both of you have ways to disengage from the turret, Repel and the Echo ultimate, but both used effectively and the Echo ultimate successful in doing damage as Kira. Forward, Joxer may have overstayed wow. his welcome. Thick skin is up and available, but Lacrit is on the way. Pillar may come out. Miracle looking to duel out the jungler here. Doesn't have the damage quite yet. Kira. Why don't Respect. more people play this champion? It does so much damage. <laughs> so, this is defined as like the I main one champion buff. Yeah. You know how you just see this Skarner walking around in solo queue and he's killing everybody inside? Yeah. No one does and that And then you much pick damage. it up and it doesn't do anything? Yeah. yeah. I, That's I, Kira. Absolutely. The man is a complete monster. Getting a CS advantage. Coming up to trade there. Protecting his own jungle. Have to see if he can keep this up though. LeBlanc, you know, starting to be more of a threat. A little bit scarier now that she can burst out on level 6. But... Kira has not been phased so far whatsoever. I don't know. And you know, credit, credit where it's due, honestly. Everyone's still farming well. The bottom lane, even though it's two kills in favor of Miracle, has not worked out for them. And they're actually still in a deficit in terms of farm. The Callista's doing well. The mid lane, whilst he is taking a lot of damage and we've seen some unfavorable trades, still up by a bit of farm as well. Yeah, great place to be. Of course, LeBlanc, once she hits that first item. Maybe able to contend just a little bit better as she looks towards that Abyssal Scepter. Steos, once again, making an impact on the map despite a different pick. We talked about that dive in the top lane. And the man, 1-1-3, one, one, only eight minutes in. Revolta, not doing too bad either. Farm, a little bit up in favor of the Elise, but Revolta, 1-1-1, one, one, and one, having some impact as well. Yeah, everybody's doing their part. And uh, Steos in particular, I will say, is the standout right now because as a ganking jungler, that's something that you need to do is they find the remnants of their blue. And of course, this was the big question at the analyst desk was, if he gets forced off these aggressive farm heavy junglers that come in mid to late game that mostly just want to power farm up, you know, was he going to be able to find an impact in the early game on what picks were available to him and has his hand on the Elise and now it's working out really well. Ganking that top lane, picking up his first jungle item and now looking to pressure somewhere else as well. Yeah, I like the immediate changes as well. Actually, Kira needs oh, to be careful. Moving in, taking a lot of damage. Kira not quite with the burst. Volta flashing in. There's a huge moment of miscommunication from INTZ. Oh, yeah, got uh, it. Good job. Challenging Smite. Burning down the last little Guess bit of health. Here, Could be in trouble. Stayos does a lot of damage. Has the double up available. Lamb's respite. Not going to come out quite yet, but Stayos rips through that health bar. Volta down to about a third. Yeah, Stayos has his completed Runic Echoes jungling item. 
in comparison to Revolta, who hasn't actually finished his. So putting in a lot of damage right now, and you would imagine counter-jungling the heck out of him. And you can kind of see it on the minimap happening. And Kira actually getting egged. Not a big deal. He did flash, though, and so he is very susceptible to repeat offenses from the jungler. And I think what we saw there is the limitations on the Anivia as Yang and Smurf start to trade back is that that burst damage, that up front burst damage of the Flash Frost and the rest of her abilities does so much, but her sustained damage not quite as powerful. Once that combo was burned, she just wasn't able to burn through the rest of uh, LeBlanc's health. Yeah, absolutely. There's enough. There's the, oh no, uh, red buff. What a disaster. That's actually an Anivia that's not going to get blue buff now and doesn't have mana because you have to expend it all to get to the blue buff. And I believe just hit level 8 as well, so has to wait to hit level 9 before he's going to get that Catalyst proc again. This may force a back that Kira did not want. Absolutely is. Burns through the last little bit of the pool. Knows that he has to retreat now, so bit of a fumble there from Steos. Happens to the best of us in the case of red buff, but... Shouldn't be too bad. Again, he had enough mana just to clear out the wave, and after he cleared it out, he went back to base. LeBlanc actually not pressuring him during that wave, which would have been a better move. And you can kind of see the map movements. They don't have vision at the blue buff to know that it was taken by Steos. But you watch Kira walk over there and actually take the time to disappear off the map. And you can't help but assume that he's now missing it. You could then be aggressive as such and look to out-trade him. But neither mid lane are really doing well on the mana front. Yeah, doing well. I mean, not really itemizing it either. Kira, of course, building towards their Rod of Ages. We'll get a lot more mana in the future. But LeBlanc purely focused on winning out the lane here with that Abyssal Scepter. Deus hoping to use this blue buff, at least one of the few champions who can potentially solo the Rift Herald. Definitely a powerful feature of her kit. Yeah, hit it in the eye. One of the redeeming features when Spiderlings are the ones tanking it. But he's got his assist here. And they get themselves that objective. Quick closeout, 250 gold total to the team, 50 between each member. So small advantage. We'll have to see what they can do with the buff, however. As the calling comes out from Miracle. Trading in every lane, but no one finding a significant advantage at this stage. Steo's taking a big chunk of health, though. That was a lot of damage. But it was still the LeBlanc ultimate used by Tokers and no Ignite. So, I mean, Kira still has power in that lane. Yeah. Revolta, of course, more than happy to pick up that dragon. And potentially more important than the dragon buffs, the five stacks for his Devourer. Siang and Smurf continue to trade back and forth in the top lane. Steos but there's one here. more member. Steos is on the way. Great cast to disengage. Don't know if they're going to dive this one out, but Yang is burning down pretty quickly. I think they will. Does have ultimate available. Steos potentially looking to get in. Has Repel jumping in to secure the kill, and they're going to grab it. Great dive once again from the side of Hard Random. Yeah, and we said it the first time they dove the Gragas. It's an Echo, and it's an Elise. Like, both of these champions have ways to get out of the turret and stop taking the aggro. Change the aggro even towards minions where possible. And that's the second time now that we've seen the Gragas go down. And he's only getting tankier from here, but it still feels so easy. And while Hard Random proves that they know how to play against this Echo and that they can shut it down, at least in the mid lane at least, it's something that INTZ have not. So have to wonder how they're going to adapt to this pick, especially as it starts to get stronger moving forward in the game. And more importantly, how this Elise continues to scale up. 2-1-3. and three. Now the scoreline for Steos. This man outperforming the opposition. Yeah, absolutely. And he's honestly been outperforming every single jungler at this competition as a whole. And he wasn't someone that we expected to be doing that, actually underperforming throughout his own split locally in the CIS region. But steps up big and when it counts on the big stage. Definitely. And so crucial here as we enter the best of five to have that clutch performance. We see a lot of younger teams really start to struggle with the pressure here. but. This rate, he's feeling pretty good. They have the first win, and they're doing incredibly well in this game. A 2k gold lead, only 13 minutes in. Yeah. In addition to the first tower, so... Pretty strong. Gets his blue. That's good. That's Third a good time's the jump. Positive start. Well, I guess second time. Third blue, but... You know, that's a very mid lane mentality that I just presented. <laughs> <laughs> Give me the first blue. Definitely. That's why, I mean, that was the great thing about Lee Sin's, uh, our Revolta's Lee Sin, right? Yeah. Said, oh, yeah, you can have this first blue. You can take this advantage. Throw it in your lane. Which, by the way, INTZ have so many wards in the bottom side river, like, set up for the dragon that it's ridiculous. They have three pink wards set up in, like, a triangle area near mid lane to keep LeBlanc alive. And then they have greens everywhere. Like, look at this. Josh now using coming them. in, looking to find the kill onto Anivia, but... The telegraph where they're going, Kira backs up, says, 
I'll be more than okay with the double stun here. Elise also making it to safety. So INTZ looking at aggressive, but just not finding the end that they wanted. Yeah, definitely not getting their way in. They were looking to counter gank, I suppose, because Deus was making his way in from the top side. And that's where the conflicting control on the map is right now. In the bottom lane of Macau and Jox are actually placing all of these pink wards in vision, as you can see. Oh, this is Deus. very Mexican standoff. Seemingly appropriate for the tournament in yeah, Mexico I was, City. I didn't want to say it. <laughs> <laughs> Already felt bad when I said Mexican standoff. <laughs> Moving down now. Looking for another standoff here in the bottom side of the map, but look, Jockster all alone. Cow not having the opportunity to get in, doesn't want to burn the Fates call quite yet, as Talkers looking for some sneaky play, not going to proc the second Sigil of Silence, or Sigil of Malice, ooh. Rest in peace, the long silence. <laughs> yeah, no, that's good. Yeah, I'm thank glad it's God. Gone. Yeah. I remember when I was like, yeah, there's no way LeBlanc's good anymore. Yeah, LeBlanc's still good. And Absolutely. horrifying to lane against. Thank they didn't God. change the damage, they only got rid of the silence. And believe it or not, the silence was not necessary <laughs> because the damage was already too high. Rough champion to lane against. And despite the kill going over to Talkers, they're obviously doing quite well here. Oh, that's the stun gone. Oh, wall goes down as well. Kira trying wow. to flash out. Does he have egg? Yeah. He does. Will be safe overall. Not even going to burn the egg there, but does get the flash. Yeah, so they still get the summoner. Revolta wasn't even really a factor in that at all. Just sitting on the side. If Kira were to fight him, though. And Steos is down here. Now on the bottom lane, they may have to use the Fates Call. They have two tools to save each other, however. Pretty rough lane to gank. Spiderling blocked out by the Tom Kench. Nothing gained. Yeah, both of these teams again. The Tom Kench would disengage. The Trundle would disengage. It's not easy to get your way in. Even the Callista. These junglers have to do a lot of work to get anything done at all. Or they just hit each other. <laughs> That Volta works. Appears to be ready for a fight here as Talkers is moving in. Maybe hoping to find the stun. Talkers now coming down. Jockster there as well, but at least just going to throw out a bit of poke damage. Make the most of those runic echoes. Now let's pick up the Scuttle Crab as Volta continues to scale up, hitting the 20 stack mark as he clears out that crab. So well on the way to picking up that Sated Devourer. Talkers in absolute control, though. This is the scary thing. The only real flip side problem that INTZ have to deal with is Smurf. They've already gifted him a 1-0-1 start from Ganks by this Elise. Yeah, and, and it's the difference between that completed Iceborne Gauntlet. Although Gragas does. Oh, are they looking to dive? Interesting. Here comes Revolta from the backside. Low health bars. TP coming in onto the minion. TP responded with as well. Are they going to find it? Yang mostly backing off. Maybe just the exchange of cooldowns, but Elise in the meantime is picking up the Rift Herald. No one diving quite yet, but there's some fighting. Kindred and Echo just kind of saying hello. Moving forward, backing off, and it looks like INTZ will brute force down that tower. In their favor, making it their first of the game. Yeah, and you have to remember, Rift Herald now actually hanging out in mid lane. LeBlanc's wave clear is risky, so they need to send more people there, and that's why this took a while to go down, naturally. Yep, Kindred on the way to help in the mid lane. Steos not going to find the stun. Great snap back on the distortion. Going up in the air. Doesn't actually save Elise, unfortunately. Those tethered abilities, so strong against things like Repel. Yeah, thankfully just stopping the follow-up damage. Yeah, moving in, though. Lecrae could be potentially caught out. Tom Kench is on the way, coming into the back half of the fight. That's a double stun coming in from Smurf. The triple stun? No. Snaps back. Lamb's respite goes down to save the team. So many cooldowns burned, but everyone backing off instantly. Yeah, and just a total recall and disengage here from Hard Random in particular. Kira's been, like... Wanting to go back for quite some time. Actually, they pushed them off the dragon. The numbers game. Back at it again. Working out well here. Oh, no! Hard random. Oh. Oh. That was so close. Yep. Damn Stahos back at it again with the dragons. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Mid lane. You gotta though. sneak them in. You gotta, yeah, you gotta sneak them in. That was sneaky, man. <laughs> <laughs> Moving up. Jockster, and this buff from the Rift Herald, often underappreciated, but working out so well. Jockster looking for a snack, but may have bit off a little bit more than he could chew here. As he moves forward, the rest of the team starting to commit. Smurf potentially in trouble, does not have that ultimate after the last fight, but TP used by Kira. Trapped behind his own team's pillar, though, getting not quite stunned up as they start to back off. Once again, skirmish lines drawn, no one fully committing to the fight. And once again, this is mostly the Kindred who 
I guess they could assume has the lambs respite. He doesn't. Now Gragas also doesn't have his barrels. You would think that hard random can break this mid lane turret. It is inevitable that it will go down being one hit. Crit. They need something. Moving in, Revolta. No lambs respite, as you said, could get burned down. Trying to make it to safety. Joxer does still have a saving option. Kira, though, goes down to egg form. He will get picked up there. Spider next on the menu. Odd eats here coming in from the Tom Kench, but a bird and a spider more than enough to make breakfast. Yeah, two big kills for INTZ, but the Lucian rotating means they may be able to defend this. It's got a bit of health to its name, though it's not a realistic defense. Yep, not too much. Miracle dishing out a bit of damage here, but no calling to clear the wave. He's still going to make it, though. Are INTZ going to commit? Looks no. Like mm. Just backing off here. Yeah, everything settles down once more. Hard random, they lose a couple of members to the Brazilian team. But they don't get objectives. No one really securing the map. Very interesting overall, this game. Both of these games have been so close and they break open so quickly. Smurf. I'm not sure he needed to ult. I just think that that did. was the cutest way to do that. Like the cheekiest way to do that. Dash in, hit the tower, kill it, snap, like instantly go back. May not yeah. have been the best play. Style points, absolutely. Style points, yes. Towards the right direction there for Smurf, if that's how he wants to play this game out. Still gets the turret. It's a bit of extra gold in the way of hard random. And we heralded Smurf as potentially one of the weaker members of this team, but you know, props to him for the style points. And so far, the 101 record on Echo. Looks like he can perform. He's actually got the highest KD in his team as well. He's been performing quite well. Good job overall. Limited pool not working against him, I believe. Maokai Trundle, known as his favorites, but when he does finally get his hands on the Echo, it does work out pretty well. Yeah, I think this is the third champion in his pool that he looks towards. Of course, a necessity now as it is the top priority in this tournament. Absolutely for good reason here, as we see them start to trade back and forth. Talkers does a lot of damage. Has to be careful though not to bite off too much. Smurf getting burned down, doesn't quite have his ultimate. Is gonna snap back, second. is he gonna get the stun? He is, what a play, that's what you like to see when Echo gets picked up, but here comes the team, Jockster, Revolta, ready for a bit of a fight. That was fantastic by Smurf, there's no other way to describe it. He didn't even have the ultimate. It was three seconds on cooldown, and he times it with the parallel convergence. So as it's up, he hits the ult, he hits the stun, and just de destroys Talkers. There's no other way to just explain it. Looking for another fight, though, Revolta. Nothing to go in here. Jockster, the gray health. Not triggering quite yet. As Smurf looks to take the bottom lane tower, INTZ on the back foot. It's hard random, try to disengage. Smurf grabbing a tower. Smurf playing out of his mind this game. You're right. That moment, that play, that's the Echo dream. That Every time yeah. you pick Echo, you want the, the ult into stun. It's the perfect echo. That is legitimately the echo dream, you're right. Yeah. He hit it. Completely. Gonna have to use Devour to save the teammate there. Moving in, stun going down. Ooh, good sidestep by Macau, but suddenly Talkers is on the wrong side of that wall. Looking for another fight. But may have overstayed their welcome. Tower dropping. Well, the Steady advantage is going. Great flank. Lacrit suddenly locked up and knocked out. TP on the backside, though. Here comes Echo. So many low health members getting stunned up. Snared eventually by the LeBlanc Revolta. Saved by the Tom Kench. The note button. Absolutely everything in that skirmish. They do still need to recall. That's a lot of members, and this is most likely going to be a tower in the top lane due to that fact. It needs to be on the Blanc to wave clear, but that's risky. So rough here for Talkers. Trying to make it out. Great play, but still, Smurf is just too tanky. And between the Echo, the Elise, and the Lucian, they have so much tower taking pressure. Yeah, and they still get that turret, so small advantages have become a big deal here. Hard Random have actually put themselves sizably in the gold lead, and that's mostly through turrets taken around the map. It's really hard to see the mid lane turret. And yesterday we praised INTZ as the, one of the smarter teams in the tournament, the more macro-focused team, but today they are falling behind as Hard Random seems to get advantages everywhere, outplaying both mechanically and in terms of map play. It feels like a holistic victory so far. Lots of positional errors, though. They're getting caught out of position a fair bit. They're actually running the risk of dying multiple times, but it feels like they've got the right idea and they've just got the mechanics to carry that idea through. And these mistakes are hidden by the same mechanics that are getting them ahead in the first place. Yeah, very good performance. Despite Talkers and INTZ, individual members doing very well, but just not quite able to execute in those clutch moments. So both teams potentially picking good fights, but I think Hard Random just out executing here. Yeah, absolutely. It comes to the crunch. The CIS region has been stepping up, but the game's definitely not over yet. 
considering it's a Tom Kench Callista combo, the damage and the ability to save one another should be able to help them out in these sieges. Yeah, now moving for the turret. The Elise does so much damage though and is onto the Macau. We're trying to follow too much because the action is absolutely everywhere. Lamb's Respite going down. Smurf potentially in trouble. It's going to pop out, but too many members are too low. Stejos looking for another kill with the rest of the team as he grabs one. Lucian will grab the second. And INTZ getting absolutely destroyed in that exchange. Yeah, two extra kills now on the board, and that is the bottom lane secured. No save is going to help them out that much. Volt is actually going to get really low here. He takes this down, and his base is dying at the same time. Actually, he might even... Nah, he'll get it. Surely. And Nivea pushing up those waves. Greg is potentially looking to get something else. Quick phase dive to dodge the body slam, and that means the inhibitor tower will drop. Volta getting the consolation prize of the dragon. The second buff, not going to be too impactful, but has to find something. A little glimmer of light here in the darkness for INTZ. It was even mentioned on the desk coming into this game that Elise was the only form of crowd control they'd have besides the mid laner. So what LeBlanc is doing right now, what Tokers is doing is trying to separate Kira from the team. And whilst their crowd control then is lacking because it needs setup time, still they are far enough ahead that they can just walk into the face of this Brazilian team and just make it work out for them. And so scary to play against too, especially for Macau and Revolta. They have a lot of mobility in their kits, but you're facing down a Trundle and an Anivia, two giant terrain obstacles that can appear at and any moment. And of Echo. Oh. Echo, this is the reason he's so strong, right? This is the pick that we talked about. This is the reason that it has been 100% picked or banned, only finding one loss over the course of this entire tournament in our last game. But 2-0 and 3, the scoreline, a 20 CS lead, and Smurf is showing up for his team. Yeah, and that's, of course, 100% win rate in top lane still, so we can give it some kind of stat that is relevant, you know? Mid lane echo, maybe not as good as top lane. Who'd have thought? Absolutely, though. Smurf has been styling on everybody this game, and it all started from Steos once again. You can see the snowball effect that this team has got. Jungler gets a, a lane ahead. The lane snowballs the rest of the map. And of course, Revolta 3-1-2, feeling pretty good as he has that 30 CS advantage, but just hasn't been able to make as big of an impact in the early game. Hasn't been able to stop Hard Random from snowballing so far. And this is the same thing as last game, though. I think Revolta's playing fine. But every time that the Brazilian team wins, Revolta's playing better than fine. Like, he is doing ridiculous things. Hyper-aggression. And that isn't being seen. He is still doing his job, however, and he is far from the underperformer on this team. Absolutely, of course. Pretty rough life for Yang in that top lane, getting so much pressure and, and maybe not quite used to the Elise Echo Tower Dive setups. As tries to disengage over and over again in the top lane, still gets dropped. Parallel Convergence goes down, going in to find the stun. Is going to lock up Jockster, but Smurf taking a lot of damage back in return. Kira, that's potentially a level 2 or 3 wall. <laughs> I want to see the abilities he's maxing now. That was massive. Talkers, though, going in, taking a lot of damage, oh. burned down immediately. Tom Kent's trying to find the save. Lamb's Respite, healing more members of Hard Random than INTZ at this stage of the game as Kira absolutely dominates in these pinches. Jockster next on the menu. Fate's Call, really only the reprieve as Hard Random look to continue to take down the members of INTZ. Yang getting cheeky on the back half with the barrel. Keep moving forward. Licrit looking for an option. Just caught. Fight continues. Getting out with the flash. The wall barely closing his escape. Hard random crushing the fight. That was just a merry-go-round, honestly, around the turret. They started in front of it. They worked through it after they got behind it by doing a full circle. And all they were doing was killing INTZ. They don't get the turret. They only get one kill. So best case scenario. Might have been two. Best case scenario. For INTZ, not the best for hard random. Yeah, of course, neutralizing that pressure, saving the tower, the more crucial objective at this stage of the game. So it will be important, but hard random may just be able to rinse and repeat here. So that worked out pretty well for You them. would believe so, yeah. And with the Baron as a point that they can look towards now primarily, even over turrets, then you can force this team away from their safe zone. And the Blanc won't have any minions to clear, only champions to hit. Not always a bad place for LeBlanc, though. Does have a lot of magic penetration here, hoping to dish out damage to every member on the opposite side. Miracle pushing in on the bottom. The solution very strong. First two items finished up, as well as the QSS. Stopping any lasting CC here. Well, they're starting again, though. They're gonna work towards this bottom lane. It should be a free target. Right. Burn down Jockster. LeBlanc on the back half hits Kira. 
slowly pushing this one out. Revolta, Whoa. massive damage. Yang missing everything, though. He's going to get caught out. Tom Kench with the note button, saving the day once again, but Smurf is on the top side. And he's about to become a big issue. That's the thing. This Tom Kench is really good as a note button. So is Callista. But they aren't actually able to deal with Echo in the top lane. The second that Gragas leaves, they have to start giving things up. Tower. Going to drop here in just a moment. Lucian, one more double tap. Two shots, all it takes. Jockster now caught out and locked down. Simply not enough note buttons to save the day. Not enough power to force a fight. Echo Everybody now gets one. <laughs> turning his attention to the mid lane. Ooh, a lot of damage going down on the talkers. Well, getting aggressive. Miracle and the rest of the team getting hungry for blood. Revolta going to use the ultimate to try to keep himself alive. But here comes the Venn diagram from Echo as he looks to find the stun. Not going to get it, but he will get Revolta. Kira trying to survive. Macau hungry for a kill, but the egg saves the day as Anivia passive denies the last bit of hope. And the ace drops for hard random as they look to end the game. And in game number two, the Brazilian side have absolutely been exterminated. See far, they work their way in, and this is a stellar performance from Smurf. From start to finish, this Echo has been just ridiculous. Everything they could want and more. You need to get rid of the Echo, plain and simple. Hard random, poised to take the series 3-0 as they dominate game two. INTZ with their backs against the wall, with their Nexus dropping, have to find hope, have to find an opportunity to turn this around because that was a crazy, dominating performance and now we know why Echo is banned every game. I think it's a pretty simple concept though for the Brazilian team this time around. Stop letting Hard Random play their own game. You give them a Nivea, they play a Nivea Trundle. They have a two wall composition which is ridiculous for zone control. It makes diving turrets, getting objectives like infinitely easier, right? Like that's exactly what Hard Random wants to do. They're an Nivea main. Like it makes so much sense. And they give them the Echo with that? I. I just don't understand, one, how Kira got Anivia, and two, how Echo got through, three, Trundle. Like, these are all... I mean, Anivia, admittedly, not necessarily a meta power pick, but in the hands of Kira, it basically is. I've never seen an Anivia look so comfortable in a lane phase versus LeBlanc. The first instance where he read the distortion, knew where LeBlanc yeah. had to jump back to, got the stun anyway, like, perfect positioning on those abilities. You said it yourself, the, this is my one champion, and they basically get a buff. It feels like they do 150 more damage than everyone else with every rotation, and just so oppressive for Kira. And, uh, and, and the they got ran. the Echo, right? Like, there's just so many other things to add to this. They got their own draft. By taking the Tom Kench, you're still giving them a Trundle and Nivea, and that is, to me, stronger than the Tom Kench anyway. It's not a good champion. Yeah, it's very odd, of course, that this made it through. We'll have to see how they adjust. But, of course, to break down that game, let's hand it over to Pastry and the Analyst Desk. Thank you, Steve. There's another good win there for Hard Random, looking absolutely unstoppable, perhaps in this series. But once again, joined by Carbon and Soul Strikes here on the desk. Let's break it down once again, because this game was just such another stellar performance from the side. And for once, we're actually going to start somewhere different. Let's start in mid lane, because um, that was sort of where things. I think we yeah undersold so the lane a little bit, not intentionally. No, no. In the pre, we, yeah, we didn't talk about it that much. Uh, we did talk about the Anivia. I did mention the Anivia. I think that's a obviously a really, really big pick, a really strong pick for Kira. Um, but, yeah, one thing I want to point out is from the spectator point of view that maybe it didn't look that good. You know, he was 1-1 about 20 minutes into the game. He hadn't really done much, didn't leave lane that much. LeBlanc got that early roam, which, you know, kind of put LeBlanc in a strong position. But he played absolutely unreal. I mean, LeBlanc comes back to lane with an extra kill, extra XP, double buffs, and then instantly gets pushed out. Like, that's not supposed to happen. And this guy is just, is just so good that he makes it work. Um, the other thing is uh, he got a number of double stuns. So Tom came to Rome, uh, brought the Callista with him. They pop up, instantly double stun, and uh, Seos gets away for free. I mean, it happened a number of times. We saw the wall max second is so good in team fights. Amazing zone control. Um, I thought... It, it looked maybe like a quiet game for Kira, but I think that's just because it was a low kill game. I thought he played out of his mind. Yeah, and uh, to reinforce what Carbon said, it was really a ticking bomb. Like, Tokus had to make some play. Uh, he was playing the assassin. He needs the kill. He needs to get those kills and get the objective. But Kira, he just played phenomenally. Yeah, again, sort of diffusing that lane very nicely there, as things are in Nivea. Uh, of course, I want to touch on, on the jungle matchup once again. Lots of junglers banned away this time. The field very much more narrow. First pick, Kindred does leave the Echo open, which I guess we'll talk about later. But Elise... Something I don't think we've seen from Staos just yet. We were wondering, can he even play these ganking-style junglers? At least does have some favorable things into Kindred. We thought Revolta might run over this game, and once again, PvP yeah. looking too good. I mean, uh, we, we, we asked the question, you know, does he, uh, does he have the 
uh, champion pool. We've seen Graves every single game so far, and is he really that good at something else? I mean, he did buy three red pots again. <laughs> no idea why. At least another champion who takes zero damage in the jungle, but uh, they did win the early skirmish, so maybe he knows something that I don't. Maybe I'll start doing it. I don't know. Um, but look, another strong performance by him. Uh, I loved his item build. He recognized that he was strong, went straight for that Rylize for the carry potential. I thought that was fantastic. Um, Kindred... Elise, I kind of give, we were talking about it backstage, I kind of give it like a 70-30 matchup in Kindred's favour, but uh, somehow he made it work. Yeah, and Elise managed to got uh, two successful ganks at top. Uh, he managed to get the Echo rolling, and Gregus was left alone. Hey, what's my uh, Kindred doing? Uh, are you taking the dragon? Are you counter jungling him? Uh, not really. Uh, Elise was actually a hidden uh, jungle farm, like really early into for, the game. For, yeah, for most of the game, I think uh, Kindred only really picked it up by the 25 minute mark, where she had she did have a 30 CS lead, and like I was saying before, you know. Um, uh, smaller CS leads in the jungle mean more because the creeps are worth more. But, I mean, only having a 30 CS lead at 25 minutes where actually she was behind in farm against an Elise for most of the game. It's not like Revolta's playing bad. It's just that Stayhouse is playing so well. Yeah, it seems like he's really just on form here. And so the rest of Hive Random will see how they match up and what could be their final game here. Don't go too far. Game three of the semifinals coming right up.